Sure. Kind of like Steve Kerr, even though, you know, but like Steve Kerr, like that type of player, like ends up being good coaches. Yeah. Usually. Uh, let's get this going. Sorry, I was trying to get this. Mark Madsen's yeah. from uh, from the Bay. I didn't know that. Well, that's from SoCal. Walnut oh, no, that's right. No, Walnut he's from – He's from. I should know that. Yeah, no, he's from San Ramon. Yeah. Uh, okay. Funny guy. Let's get, this, let's get this up and running. Okay. All right. Oh, Sam Mary's Presented. Oh. Presented by Under Armour. And – one hundred dollar match with promo code Light Years, presented by Prize Picks. One more time, one hundred dollar match on your first deposit. The promo code Light Years. Welcome to Light Years, Andy Lou. We are recording this <clears throat> after Warriors lose one twenty three, one eleven to the Indiana Pacers. Uh. Feels like I, we saw it coming a mile away. Let's not mm-hmm. let's not lie about it. This team has shown us who they are for what all year, two years, two years in a row. They've shown us who they are, and so of course, you know, young team coming in who's matched up well with them, ran them off the floor. It, you know, what's most frustrating about tonight's game was I feel like it's a microcosm, not just of why they. St- are disappointing this year. It's a microcosm of every one of their issues the last four to five years. The two timeline plan, the staleness overall. They get cooked by Tyrese Halliburton. Tyrese Halliburton, who they liked, but they had to take Wiseman over him in the draft, looked every bit the superstar he is. I know he's been struggling for the last month or two, but I think everyone would agree he's a star caliber player. Uh, and Pascal Siakam. Siakam, it's not a commentary on how I feel about Kuminga, who had a rough game today, but I think has generally had a positive season, or Wiggins, who had another bad game today. Uh, it's the lack of urgency to want to get better or take any form of risk, and everything is – doubling down on yourself versus looking in the mirror and realizing we might not have the answers internally. That's, that's what it is. Siakam and Tyrese Halliburton were the two best players on the floor tonight. Could throw Steph in there, although he looked gassed halfway through the game and towards the end of the game. Steph, by the way, only player who can go for 25 and 10 and five. And we're like, Oh, he played poorly, but it just speaks to kind of his talent level. Right. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I would be mad, but I'm just kind of like, get me to July because I'm just tired of this team. Um, Okay. Uh, I agree with everything you said, but I, I feel like I want to, uh, if I were the Warriors, if I were uh, if I were Kirk Lacob, or if I were Steve Kerr and I was sitting across from you on this podcast on a Friday night after that debacle, uh, I, I would say uh, you're right. The Warriors probably should have looked in the mirror and made some adjustments from who they are. But at the same time, they may have sold their souls for 2022 where they did double down on who they were, are, am, and it worked for that one season. Now you look at the, the, and then I, I'm kind of turning it back to myself. Fair. I think you look at the five seasons that the Warriors have had uh, since Clay tore his ACL. Um, the Warriors have won one championship and then every other season has been the same season, right? Yeah. Yeah, even if it, 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 let's say you throw in the tanking season and say Steph didn't break his hand, that exact, that season would have just been this. What is the difference? There's no difference, right? And so it's pretty funny because they have doubled and tripled down every season since that, since, since that clay moment at Oracle. One season it's worked, they've won a championship. So I think you can argue. You know, most teams, you know, would, would would give everything they could to win a championship. Chris Paul, James Harden, right? Those guys, Damian Lillard, Russell Westbrook, and the Warriors. It, it feels like the last five years have been a failure. Um, you know, when you when you talk about all these things, uh, but I think they 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 feel like because of that that it's worth doing that. I don't know if I can argue too strongly against that if they were to say that. That that's all. Even but- if. All- it doesn't help them because <laughs> certainly it doesn't look good right now. So you're not wrong. 
uh, one championship in the last five years is better than all but four other teams. You know, four <laughs> other teams won titles, maybe three, because Denver might repeat. But the point is, they, they did achieve the ultimate goal, and there's only a couple other teams who can say that. Every other team, I'd, every other season, I'd argue they've been mm-hmm. – a 44 win team. Last year mm-hmm. they won 44 games. This year they're on pace to win about 44 games. There's no real difference other than last year 44 got you the sixth seed, and this year you're in the you're playing. Three years ago they were in the playing with a 39 and 33 team in the 72 game season, which if you play the math out again, <laughs> comes out to about a 44 win team. Kind of who they've been the whole time, but slightly above 500. Uh, they've been small the entire time. They haven't had a legitimate second option around Steph since Clay got injured. And since Clay's come back, bless him, but he's more one of the guys than a second option sure. at this point. Uh, it's been doubling and tripling down on Andrew Wiggins being that potential number two guy. He did it for one year, but every other year, it's been more Minnesota than two, 2022 right. to me is the exception. It's not the rule. Uh, and then it's been overinvestment in young players. And every year it's, well, you know, they're getting older. We have to go into the young guys. I'm sitting here going, I can make a case. Steph was the best player in the NBA the last five years for the majority of it. And you spent every year worrying that it was going to fall out instead of going for it. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's then fr- yeah. you can, I mean, you can then, you know, if I want to kind of, and I and I do kind of want to take your side now moving forward because it, it might be too late. <laughs> it, it really might be too late for, for you now to go back and, and say, let's cash our ch- chips in. So I, I don't want to be too kind of doom is gloom. It's just, it's just, they, they that but one you- season really feels like they, they are going to look at that 20 years from now and Bob Meyer is going to sit in front of a camera uh, on whatever, whatever, is it going to be HBO Max or is it going to be Prime or is it going to be Peacock that runs that documentary, Sam? Yeah, but they're a bidding war on it. That's all. I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So that penultimate documentary that they run on the Warriors dynasty, they're going to sit across and say, "Hey, man, like, you know, those those five seasons after KD left was was rough, um, and, and maybe well, we the got- Warriors don't end up doing anything after that, but that one season, right? That and it was worth." The, all the bad decisions that they made, you know, they, they make the wise decision based on, okay, we want a big, we want someone athletic. We don't want to trade down. We, we just want to pick the we high want, upside we want stuff, the, right? We want the upside. Right. Yeah, exactly. So they're like, okay, that's worth it. And they pick Kaminga and who knows what happens with Kaminga. And it's like, we want, we pick another guy like that. Right. And, and so on and so forth. And Andrew Wiggins is going to get turned into a success story, which I think ultimately it is. They trade for him. It works out for that one season. Now they're going to end up probably trading him away. But looking back on that 20 years from now, it is probably going to be like, a, hey, we helped turn yeah. Wiggins. It, and so he's not hes not going to be remembered as a bust. And no? if he was in Minnesota, he would have. And, you know, you and I might say his career is disappointing relative to what he could have been. But that's not how he's going to be remembered. He's a sealed champion, you know. Uh, yeah, and and to your point, I mean, Steph does look gassed. He does look old. He looks 36. I still think he's got it in him. But now management has to counteract the fact that he looks older. So any move that they potentially make in the offseason has to be with the idea that we don't know how many years he has left. We don't know if he could be the number one. You know, we got if we're going to trade for someone, they need to be under 30. They need to be a building block. And the next thing you know, it's like, well, if it's not Giannis, we're not doing it, you know, <laughs> and, which has been the same calculus that's got them into this situation. You know what I mean? Where it's always like, oh, Siakam, I think, is actually the perfect example because Siakam's not a superstar. Two examples, by the way, not just Siakam. There's another guy. <laughs> Fair. But uh, Go on. but I was on the trade front. Siakam's not a superstar, right? He's a damn good player. He's an all-star caliber player. He can help you win. But he, he's not a he's not foundation. If he's your best player, we saw what that looks like in Toronto, right? It's not good, right? So you're the Warriors. You're like, Ugh. can't we just 
develop Kuminga and Wiggins to be just as good as him? Why don't we just do that? Why don't we just do that? You know, Five years. If we're gonna if we're gonna cash that all in, I want to know that for sure we're getting you sound like Lakeham a, a top ten player. I mean, I, is this like, is this an inaccurate rendition of what the last five years have been? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I the other guy I argue would be Miles Turner, actually. Um, it's the one <laughs> that true. it's yeah. another guy, not as good as Siakam, certainly not as good as Siakam, but Miles Turner would be a very good fit on the Warriors. Who knows how, how much they'd actually help him, right? But, but like that, that's kind of the point is, mm -hmm. is that there, there are, there have been a lot of guys that they could have taken a shot on. Um, I mean, hell, they took a shot on Wiggins. <laughs> honestly but but that was more of a desperation yeah, like no we no but that, that's they were given a pick to take wiggins yeah yeah you're right where whereas you're right. You're right. uh miles turner or siakam would have been one of those situations where you're like all right we got to give some stuff up but we're betting in our situation he'll be it's it, no one's gonna give give a crap about what we gave up because it's gonna oh, be so good okay how about this i just thought i started this um I love I love the uh the the Giants Warriors analogies lately. The Niners is not working out so much. Niners are doing well. It's not working out uh, with those. Stab they're stable. Yeah, they're, they're stable. stable, right? I, I'm yeah. liking the offseason and all that. But if you look at the Giants and you you saw they signed a year uh of Blake Snell and then a year of Matt Chapman and they gave up two draft picks and a million dollars of international money. It which which really I don't know. People can argue whether that's worth it or not, but that is a risk for a team that I, might not even make the playoffs. But their backs are against the wall. Right, people okay. don't give a shit about them. They haven't made the playoffs in eight years. I mean, they put they, they basically. I saw they put LED lights. They're trying to turn it into a rave. Like they're oh, desperate, man. They're desperate. They are desperate. They are <laughs> desperate. Their backs against the wall. They they've probably been mandated by or, or something mandated to just say, hey, we gotta find a way to get people to come, and they and they do something like that. You could argue, and, and again, the 2022 championship is is the greatest thing to happen. Uh, uh, to this, to 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 team Steph's career, all of that, but that title does feel like a, and then the couple of titles before that does feel like a. Hey, our back's not against the wall. We're only going to do something that we want to do, if it one hundred percent is going to work out for us. Because we, we talked about that, and it, they're just not in the desperate desperation kind of thing. And are they going to be this off season? And I think that sucks. I think it sucks because, uh, and I always kind of. I think it's weird to have to make this point, but it's like you're not going to see a better player than Steph Curry in a Warriors jersey in your lifetime. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not happening. It's definitely not happening in mine. It, you know, uh, it's not happening. And to play it cute because you want to be the smartest team in the room during his last good years, it, it just kind of sucks. It really does because. And I think Kuminga is going to be a hell of a player. I really do. I'm higher on him than you are. He had a bad night tonight. It happens, right? But I've been very positive about it. But there's no chance he'll ever be the best player on a contender. I'm willing to put my, like, and and that, look, how many guys in the NBA? Let me ask you this. Three. How many guys in the NBA who are under, who are on their rookie deals? So let's say Tyrese Halliburton's class and below. Would you say I feel confident they could be first options on contenders when they grow up? Confident? We're not even confident. Right. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I was the gonna list. Say, throw some names out. Anthony Edwards is. People are throwing that out there. You confident? Anthony Edwards is one. Okay. Um, Shea, Halliburton. Okay. Shea's older, but Halliburton's maybe two. I don't even know if I'd, I'd say that on Halliburton, but yeah, those, uh, <sighs> that draft would be uh, Ant Edwards, Wiseman, uh, Lamelo, Halliburton. Um, that's probably it. In turn, like, there's not a lot of guys in that draft. Now, then you get to Kuminga's class. Kuminga's class is Cade Cunningham, Shangun, Evan Mobley, Franz Wagner, Scotty Barnes. Every one of these players, I think, will be an all star. I'm not convinced any of them are good enough to be the best player on a title. No, team. no, no. Stop. I could honestly, I might make the case Shangun has the best chance. Okay. And I'm I'm not even you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think Scotty Barnes could be a Draymond Bam type of winning, like second, third option on a contending team, which is a great player. I would take down the Warriors right now. He's not gonna be the best player on a title team. You know what I'm saying? He's not. And and then you get into the the following draft. Okay, maybe Chet 
What about Paulo Bancaro? Probably not. And then you get into the following one, Wembenyama. I mean, if he isn't, it's just a disappointment at this point. <laughs> but, and and the overarching point I'm trying to make here is it's so rare that any yeah. player develops to be that good. It's hard enough to find a Clay Thompson or a Draymond Green. It's impossible to find a Steph Curry. So when you have one, that should be your priority instead of just constantly wanting to be like, we're going to recreate it and do this sort of thing. And so, I don't know. It, I'm, it's sticking in my mind more because the two players who killed them on the Pacers more than anyone tonight, one was a guy that we've relitigated in the draft a hundred times. And the other is a guy that we've done at least 50 episodes about trading about. Actually, two guys that we've done 50 episodes about trading about. So oh. it's running in my mind more than normal. And, and and the Pacers, you know, to talk about the game for a couple seconds, for those that didn't watch it, the game went exactly how you thought the game went. The Warriors. Uh, you've, uh, you've seen it even if you didn't watch it. Yeah, you've seen it a million times. They went up a little bit. The Pacers caught up. The Pacers are a terrible defensive team, but somehow they locked the Warriors down as the Warriors turned the ball over in the second half. Same old stuff. Um, it's interesting to me because it's not like the Pacers are this great, this great team, but uh, they make sense. They make sense. And... Uh, they're a young team, right? And I do, and I do think you watch games like this. They have a lot of guys, uh, especially with Miles Turner and Pascal Siakam. They are in their prime twenties years, prime twenty years, mm -hmm. uh, and and those are players that are winning players. I, I know people have different things to say about Miles Turner, but I think he's a winning player. I think I think you put him on a on a team, he's good. He does more good things than he does bad teams. Things, same thing for Pascal Siakam, obviously for Halliburton. And the Warriors don't have enough of those guys, right? They just don't have it. it it's one or the other. It's one or the it's one or the other or it's Andrew Wiggins. And we talk about this every time. And that's just that's the part mm -hmm. that's where you're saying doubling down, doubling down. It's just hard doubling down on even though Chris Paul has been great, he just can't play defense anymore. And is that his fault? Not really. He's 40. You know what I'm saying? It's 40. Yeah, but Jemski. Now for two more months. Actually, <laughs> it, it, six it, weeks. <laughs> actually, I thought he was like 38. Okay. But and then you got and then you got pods no, right, right. on the other side, yeah. right? And it's like, okay, pods. Does does he make a couple of those layups? Does he defend a little better? Yeah, he does. Three years from now. Honestly, same thing with Kaminga, right? Four years yeah. from now. Um, he might be the one being Siakam, you know, kind of kind of just being a, a super reliable, just give me the ball in the post. I'm making the right play, passing, scoring every time. And the Warriors got to live with these 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 young player mistakes and while trying to win, it's just, you know, it's hard. Yeah. It's I really like Kuminga and I really like Pajemski as players. And it's just the overarching like pick a lane. Because when you don't pick a lane, you kind of end up in the middle lane, which is kind of where they've been yeah, for four right. four of the five years. You know, they're not bad, but they're not particularly good. They make young player mistakes. They have veterans kind of not having enough going on. It's just, well, it's so so that one year, they they if we go back, they didn't actually pick a lane that year. But they caught lightning in a bottle that I I think it just doesn't <laughs> normally happen, right? Because you gotta remember, Clay Clay was coming off injury that season, and and he looked amazing. And Poole took a crazy leap. You know, we thought he mm -hmm. was going to be better than CJ McCollum, and that's certainly not been the case. And Kaminga sat on the bench. Wiseman sat on the bench. Otto Porter played like a twenty eight million dollar player, and then of course Andrew Wiggins became. Uh, like this, this we lived like up Sean to what Marion people thought he would be yeah. in this prime, yeah. So in, lightning in, draft, in a bottle, yeah. lightning yeah. in a bottle that season, really. And 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 I, you know, you you don't. I, what is why? Where did lightning in a bottle even come from? But you certainly you don't do that more than once, though. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's you know, you I've never a, I've never questioned the expression, but but it's a fair point. No. Uh, huh. But we all know what it means. We all know what it means. It, it it honestly is like uh that year is like a baseball team who you know wasn't good enough, but just got hot as hell at the right time. Cause that's kind of that's kind of what they were, right? Giants did it three times. You yeah. you would would the would you I which is honestly so they caught lightning and bottle three times five years. But it's like they were never the best team. Not to say though the Warriors were, I would say, the best team that year. It's just it's just now that you look back on this, it, it's like how but there are similarities because if I was to be honest about those Giants teams, they had elite players, but they did not have an elite team. And then guys who were not kind of elite players randomly came up big. For randomly. Like, like, like they had the pitching and, and Buster Posey, which is a foundation to win. But then 
fucking Cody Ross out of nowhere. Like that, that's like the Andrew Wiggins thing right there. Yeah. You know, where you're just like, this is not a sustainable thing. Cody Whereas Ross and Andrew Wiggins. Yeah, I, honestly, I think Cody Ross might have made more all star teams. Too, <laughs> but uh what's but, an NBA comp for that for that title? Like the Dallas Mavericks beating beating the Heat. That that that's like yeah, a comp for yeah. the Warriors title. Or something that's like that. actually probably the best comp for the Warriors title because we we thought it was like the beginning of a second chapter, but reality it was a bunch of stuff coming together in a unlikely way, and then they decide to go a different direction and never goes back. Yeah, I like talking about twenty twenty two though. I don't mind it. I mean, I, I don't need to talk about tonight's game. <laughs> As we've said, we've all seen tonight's game a million fucking times. So, you know what I do like talking about, though? Yes, sir. I like talking about my plays on prize picks. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I can count on Steph to cover the over. I decided, look, man, who can I count on to cover in March? Steph Curry and Caitlin Clark. Steph's they're gonna been- they're gonna put them up. They're gonna put them up. And Steph, you know what? I got a very close cover. Hit twenty five. I got him at twenty four and a half. But I'll take it. Now Caitlin Clark hasn't played. I'm playing her in Saturday's lineup. But Prize Picks gave us the promo code to get her at a half a point instead of thirty one and a half. I, I feel pretty confident she's gonna cover that. So yeah. I'm about to get a three to one payout on that. This is just, enjoy it. This is easy money right here. You you can win up to hundred x your money. You're gonna win three x your money on Prize Picks, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what, what 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 is it? Light years code light uh, promo code promo code light years promo code light years right? Uh, there you go. Promo code light years hundred dollars match on your first deposit. Um, man, I can't wait. I'm gonna be watching. I'm gonna be watching tomorrow. Locked in. I will be. I will be locked in. Should we talk tournament for a second before yes, we get back to the games? Please, yes, please. How are you enjoying the tournament? You know, I've I used to be a big college hoops fan. I'm not so much anymore. But uh, but March Madness has a way to to be yeah. vibes, doesn't it? Just the I, vibes are special. I will say I've been less into men's college basketball this year than other years. I can't really point it to anything other than life's been super busy. Obviously, Warriors are a priority over college basketball, and no one really compelled me to watch. But it doesn't matter, man. When the tournament starts, yep. you get into it. You start reading up on all these teams. And just they play so hard, like it means yes. something. It's it's you can't like so, yeah, it's college hoops. They're, they don't shoot it as well as NBA players, or particularly NBA players against the Warriors. But man, if you like competition, it's fucking fun to watch. Um, you don't normally see, and this is you know we go back to the NBA on this a lot. Um, college basketball players. You know, most of them don't end up playing in the NBA. Most of them don't. Sure. You know, every it feels like every year we watch an Ivy League school uh, beat a top C team, and 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 uh, who's that kid? Goki ten threes the other night, and and, and he beat Kentucky. Um, that kid's not going to be actually. He's not even a kid. He's like twenty five years old. But like, he's not going to be playing anywhere most likely for a long time. Like, he's going to yeah. end up being. You know, the joke is these guys end up being accountants or somewhere. It's true, they end up in sales, right? They end up mm-hmm. being mixed consultants and just just watching players play so hard for that moment is cool because I think we do miss that in the NBA unless it's the NBA finals. Um, and even last year we watched the NBA finals and after they win the championship, but Jokic is kind of like, Oh, I don't care. And it's like, dude, fuck off. Like we know you care. Stop acting like you're too cool for it. Right. And, and these kids are not too cool for it. Everybody cares. So that it's the best part of this. Now I think Sam for the play style, I actually think it's changed so much. You know, we used right. to watch, yeah, we used to – so I was watching LSU, women's basketball, and every every possession you see they have two big big women. One of them is Angel Reese, and every possession they're like posting up. They're like posting up, put a hand up, and I'm watch- and I flip back to a, a NCAA men's game, and uh, you don't see any of that. You don't see any of that. It's completely different basketball. I don't – do you like that? Like are you – do you enjoy that more or, or – I think it's fascinating that that it's kind of yeah. the NBA ish version of the game now in college. I, I think you know I'm going to tie it back to the Warriors because you mentioned Jack uh, Golke, who you know obviously was the story of amazing day one <laughs> day one of the men's tournament. 
just cooked Kentucky. I was a little bummed because I was kind of wanted to, not that I'm a Kentucky fan. I just like, I wanted to watch some of their players play a little lo- longer. Right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Nothing, but I didn't mind watching the game. It was cool to see Oakland university and everything that happened there. Um, I'm pulling up a shot chart right now. The dude took seven shots inside of the three point line all season. 347 of his total shots were threes. You watch that game. Uh, he didn't even, tr- it wasn't like Steph hunting a three, but taking a layup. It was like, no, no, three, three. That's it. That's all I do. And I'd be realist if I didn't say I, this is all Steph's impact. It really is. It's really all Steph Curry. Uh, because I've watched college for an incredibly long time. They didn't play like this 15 years ago. And now it's, and this is probably why you're seeing more upsets. A lot of teams who aren't as big don't have the athletes that, you know, a Kentucky has, uh, an Arizona has, name your, you know, Duke has, like name your blue blood program. But they got some six four guys who can shoot the ball and they're willing to play hard, set screens. You know what? Single elimination, guy gets hot. That's scary. It's scary because if you can't if you can't defend him and he's he's getting off, three's more than two. You yeah. Know? I, that's that's always been the we could go all the way back. You want to talk about Steph and the Warriors, you go all the way back on um uh Stepha Davidson. And that was kind of obviously the beginning of it all. But Davidson had a chance against these team against these teams because Steph was an elite three-point shooter. And that was before people were like, oh, my God, you can shoot threes and and you can just blow people away by by being the greatest three-point shooter of all time. So, you know, we're we're watching, you know, we talk about price picks and and all this stuff. Uh, We're watching some of these 11 seeds be favorites against against four seeds. We're watching some of these 11 seeds. I think there was an 11 seed tonight or 13 seed that beat Wisconsin. Like, they beat them handily. Um, and then I think Clemson was an underdog. They, they Clemson ended up winning by 20. I think they were like a five seed, but they were an underdog. And so like that, that stuff is, is crazy to me that I think we're just going to see more and more upsets. Um, but, uh, but where the league is going, I think it is more fun to watch. It's more drive and kick. Um, it's less like bulky big men, although it feels mm-hmm. like maybe the best team in the nation has, has that, has that big guy. ED or whatever, like he's gonna be in the NBA, maybe. Um, but but it's it's kind of but cool does, to see it, it is it is more like all right, if you have a big try to space around him, try to, you know, same principles you see with NBA team, same principles you see at every level. It just seems like there's more of a focus on spacing, shooting, well, all that sort of stuff. Well, we we talked about, I mean, we only touched on it briefly, but Caitlin Clark is essentially the woman's version of Steph Curry. Is, yeah. Isn't she? <laughs> yes. And she's, is she the most popular woman's basketball she player? She's the most popular basketball player on any level at this point. You know, <laughs> like I, I think, I think there's a wow factor with her. Um, and let's be honest, it's because people, people have never seen a woman's player shoot like that before and do some of the things she's doing. Right. So it's just kind of, yeah, I, I do think she's the biggest star in the tournament men's or women's and yeah. potentially the biggest star in basketball, just because same reason you're watching and I'm watching. Oh, I got to see this. I got, I got to see if she can go for 60. I got to see, I got, I got to see if she can beat a team with four players who are, you know, going to go pro when she doesn't have those teammates because she could shoot it from 40 on them. It, it does feel like the Steph thing. It, it also allows the Steph and now Caitlin Clark thing does allow different types of players to become real players um i'm watching this nebraska player he's japanese uh i'm gonna butcher his name but kc tomagachi but like or or something i butchered it but um (laughs) but the reason he can play tomanaga thank you from the comments i'm asian so i can do it the reason why he can play college basketball at this level is because of steph curry sure 10 years ago is he playing (laughs) is he is he playing in college basketball no shot no shot. Half these dudes that I'm watching are, are able to play out there because of Steph. There's no way. There's no way a guy that's six feet tall uh, uh, shooting threes. I mean, he can't defend a lick. But, like, it's just the value of shooting off the bounce, shooting off a screen. Like, it used to be like, oh, my God, J.J. Redick. But you got to remember, J.J. Redick was shooting a lot of mid-range jump shots. A <laughs> lot at Duke. A lot. And he, wasn't handling, and he wasn't handling the ball. Um, just – 
because it was like forbidden. It's like if you're a shooter, you're coming off of screens only. No dribbling, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, like now it's like, okay, if you can really cook off the bounce from deep, we're going to put you in a high ball screen because it's going to put pressure on the other team's defense. It just is. Like it's <laughs> it's scary to guard. And if you get hot, like, yeah, you know, you could you can put up 20 points in five minutes and then next thing you know, a better team is is tight. They're like, oh, God, I don't want to lose to this mid-major. What's going on? You know, uh, it, it is like the ultimate equalizer, right? Mm, so it's just, it's just I think it's cool. I think it makes basketball uh, a, a thing that everybody can dream about. It's hard to dream about being Giannis Antetokounmpo. I'll be honest with you. It's hard to be the Greek freak when you're just a normal dude that lives in Texas, yeah, Minnesota, Bay Area, whatever, right? It just it just... It's it, but anybody theoretically can be, uh, you know, Clay, Caitlin Clark. You, anybody can shoot a thirty-five footer. They they can. Um, yeah. You know. Are so. you gonna put in the work, and do you have the kind of touch to be good at it? It's a different yeah. story, but it, it's more achievable than like I'm gonna get leg implants and go from six one to six eleven. You know, you could do that so. now. You know, you, you know, you could you could do yeah. that now. Uh, not sure if that helps you in basketball. We'll we'll, uh, we'll get to goons. Uh, I know we want to get to the goons, but before we do, um. Light Years Podcast. We and all season we have been brought to you by Under Armour. Steph Curry believes uh, makes you believe you can do anything, and the Curry Elevens are specifically designed with ultimate bounce grip and stability to allow everyone to do their thing. New generations of ball players are coming up, showing the basketball world that the old rules do not apply. The future is exciting, fast, positive, and hungry. This NBA season, rock with your favorite player, rep his shoes on off the court. The Curry Elevens. Are perfect for both their uh, both the committed and casual ballers. The UA Warp Tech makes the shoe feel like it was designed for your feet. Locked in, no matter what you do on the court. Stop in your tracks with dual density UA flow, cushioning in traction, and emergency brake you don't even notice. Steph's eleventh signature shoe steps into the second decade of a sneaker career, pulling colorway inspiration from the wonders of a positive and modernized future. On off the court, take these kicks with you when you leave the scrimmage and rep UA wherever you go. Do your thing, change the game. The Curry Eleven, Future Curry. It's available now at currybrand.com. And we, the Light Years Podcast, is are brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. Uh, boys are going to go on a road trip here, but they will be back. You will get more chances to watch uh, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, and the rest of the ensemble. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly when what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Uh, game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last-minute seats, find exclusive flash deals, and sponsored tickets, uh, sponsor deals on tickets for basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. With zone deals, you pick the section and game time picks the seats for big-time savings. So download the game time app. Create an account, use light years for $20, $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L I G H T Y E A R S for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Nice, nice. All right, we got some goons to get to. Let's get to it. I'm going to lead off with Ken. Ken brings the positivity. Oh, no, more than the positivity, Ken brings the vibes. I'm pro Ken vibes. As I say that, I'm sure Ken's about to have technical issues and not come on stage. Oh, there we go. <laughs> How's it going, Ken? Hey, thank you for the compliment. Hard to keep the vibes positive tonight, but uh, <laughs> I think uh, I think you guys are on the right track. Just NCAA tourney, men's and women's, that's the place. Because uh, let's just stick with that. That's that's, <laughs> where the, that's where the positive vibes are right now, you know? Where's your money? Who who do you have winning the whole thing? Or what are you watching for? What what's exciting about the tournament? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to get into it because I can no okay. longer watch the Warriors. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, I right. uh... let me ask you this, Ken. What are what would you consider successful for the Warriors the rest of the way out? They're obviously not winning a championship this year. They might not make the playoffs at this stage. What would you, on March 22nd, with the idea that we want them to reshape the roster in the offseason, 
what would you consider a positive way to close out the year? All right. I'm glad you asked me that question. So if you, if you think about the math of uh, an N- NBA basketball game, mm-hmm. what's the average payroll? 150 million for, per team, something like that. So yeah. it probably costs $4 million to put on an NBA game every game between the two teams shelling out money for ushers and refs and, and players, okay. 4 million bucks. And with that, you get the opportunity to evaluate 240 NBA minutes. Okay. There's nothing else like it. Nothing else compares to sure. that film. So what a guy does in the G league doesn't count. What a guy does at practice doesn't count at a shoot around at a, None of that counts. So now is your chance to see what people can do. And I've written off this season for the Warriors. But I would love to see who exactly can trace cover on the perimeter the rest of this year. I'd like to see Kavon shoot from outside, you know, I think they should just shut Draymond down. You know, they got him for three more years. They don't need to wear his back out for the next 10 games. Uh, you know, what can Gui, what can Guy Santos do? What can Lester Quinones do? Can Dario? Oh, you want, you, so you're ready to empty the bench. You're ready to just be like, screw it. We are at game 70, which will be on Sunday. Might as well see what we have. Let's see. Let's see what we have. And then, do better next season. Absolutely. Sign Dion Waiters on a 10-day contract. Oh, my his... goodness. No, I'm serious. Couldn't we have used him off the bench a few times this year? Someone that can actually get a bucket. Could you use know? a lot of players, to be fair. But, yeah, but, I don't know. But, <laughs> don't but know remember, remember when uh, Gary Payton joined the team just at the very end of the year, the year before they won the championship? Okay. Yeah, I okay. see where you go. I see where you go with this. They found uh, a guy felt... that was critical the following year. Okay. So... That's a, yeah, that's a that's a good call out because like it didn't feel like it mattered in the moment, but it ended up mattering six months later. Right. And and these contracts are tricky. If you get that guy on your team, even with just one day to go in the season, then mm-hmm. a year or two from now, you've got their early bird rights when you start getting sure. restricted on how you can use a guy. So if you found a guy at the end of the season, a year from now, two years from now, that can be really helpful that you now had sure. them on the roster. Appreciate so, it, Ken. For sure, it, guys. It's a fair call out. I mean, let's see if we can find someone. Pat Spencer going to save the season next year. Let's go. He's he he likes Ski Santos. I'm a I'm a, I'm a fan. I think you give these guys a shot. Just let them go. Let them go make the playoffs or the play in and see what happens. I don't know. Paratosh, what's they up? Have a, they have a whole offseason arrest coming. Yeah, I think for me it would be let's see if Steve Kerr can play five guards at the same time. Yes. <laughs> yes. Pat Spencer, <laughs> center Pat, yes. Pat Spencer at the five. He, he, I mean, even you know if Pat Spencer is playing, Curry's are going to be off the ball with, with Spencer. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, I w- I just wanted to say, uh, first of all, uh, watching on the East Coast sucks. Honestly, I've been here like four days. I've watched three games, all starting at ten <laughs> o'clock, and like they've lost two at <laughs> one. I have no idea how I, meek this or other. Imagine watching that Coast. third quarter past midnight and how angry I would get. It, it, for me, it was like eight thirty nine. Oh. I was angry. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I'm afraid that like, some of my apartment neighbors might start complaining because I yell at 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. <laughs> the night at the screen. So, but uh, okay. The other thing is, I, I, I was just thinking this, but in the last um, two years, uh, I have been through. I know a lot of Warriors fans probably also have been through. And Andy was talking about that the five stages of grief, uh, starting with denial, where uh, after they have won the championship and then they traded away Porter and they went into this youth movement with the two timeline. Uh, uh, I was like, oh yeah, the two timeline is going to work. This worked last year. So that's denial. Um, anger was when uh, 
Steve Kerr was playing coming uh, Anthony Lamb and stuff coming uh, uh, bargaining was when uh, they t- traded for Chris Paul and we're like Chris Paul is going to save us and we thought we all thought that hey that he's going to get the second unit and like play much better than Poole and sure, whatnot. Sure, sure. Depression has been there for the entire two years or more or less most of it. <laughs> and I think now I'm at the stage of acceptance just like Andy Lou Andy is at. where basically i'm like yeah i think this is what they signed up for and it's that's not just the front office i think like this roster isn't much different than what steve kerr would have wanted or what curry would have wanted so and yeah. two months ago sam you were talking about steve kerr not making it past the season clay maybe not being on the roster past the season and those are the kind of hard decisions that we would have to make if we want to see curry contend again going forward and like I mean I have accepted that they don't want to make those hard decisions so might as well just enjoy the remaining part of Curry's career so sorry for the doom and gloom but yeah that's what it's probably just the 1 a.m in the morning talking yeah enjoy man I mean enjoy I can't New York argue. get out I there, can't man. argue yeah go enjoy New York and all I can say is I can't argue with you yeah uh, this round you've won <laughs> I I think I think I think Peratosh the point about um this this team is what stuff wants i don't i don't it's hard to argue against that like stuff wanted chris paul I, i don't think these things were put on stuff i don't think i don't think they were like stuff do you think stuff need... wants andrew wiggins what's that do you think stuff wants andrew wiggins i don't know i don't know I, i'm sure i'm sure he's tired of the uh of 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 this season of of Andrew Wiggins I'm sure he is. I think a lot of the Warriors are, which is sure. why people get really angry at us sometimes of, of like the Wiggins stuff it's that like well, means, that just, just means we matter. <laughs> so you do know these guys are you know my my buddy doesn't watch much hoops and he was he was here we went golfing and he came over he's like, I'm watching Warriors game he didn't watch basketball. He's like why do you guys why do you guys always making fun of Wiggins? Isn't he is he better than Harrison Barnes? Like didn't he win a championship? And I'm just like Yeah, he did win a championship, but you got to understand like like he hasn't shown up in a season and a half. Like, yes, he's always going to be a legend, but there, there's something like the guy has not shown up. Uh, you think the players are just happy? <laughs> like, what are, what, are, what are we talking about here? Like, you think Steph is like you think Steph is sitting here like a fucking social media war and going like warrior and going like, "Oh yeah. He doesn't need to tell us anything. He can show up whenever he wants." Fuck off. Stop Meanwhile, you get mugged by four dudes on a screen. because he has a right to not do it. Yeah, yeah of course. On, of man. course. Anyway, let's keep moving. I think I think our guy no caps What do we got. Up. Oh, yes. It's oh, been a minute. Hopefully he can Hopefully he can get on here. I don't even know his name. It's just Light Years Goon. I love that. Just Light Years Goon. Yes, sir. Well, the AV's the AV's a little aggressive. We might want to fix the AV for. <laughs> we might want to fix the AV. A little aggressive. You might What's want to up, unmute, man? Unmute yourself, boss. Or not? <laughs> Are we cooked? Oh, you got you got about ten seconds. <laughs> We're gonna move on. Many men. Man, man, man. Light years goon, baby. Oh man. Well, all right. All right. We're we'll moving bring, on. Bring him back if he call back. back. Call back, my man. He's always got some fire takes. He does. Touchy almost up, baby. All right, we'll go we'll go to the Apparently back. we're all an old men, apparently. It's uh-huh. like we don't know how to use a phone, we don't know how to use a screen, we don't know how to use fucking lineups correctly, and we don't know how to win at home. It's just a perfect encapsula- encapsulation of this fucking season, bro. Okay. Unbelievable. You know what? The only good thing about this week is I'm going to Vegas. That's about hey. it. Hey, what you doing in Vegas? Um, uh, apparently I'm going to study a different different types of businesses so you know yeah, it is what it is not as fun not as fun <laughs> not as fun but unless, they, unless they're businesses of the of the of the club variety then then that's fun. <laughs> probably yeah. i might i might look into that <laughs> yeah yeah what you got for us that show Uh so at this point i'm just kind of at the point of saying like is moody 
it's me cooked this year because what is going on? Because that man has been only getting like five minutes every game at this point. And it's like, okay, it's like, oh, I understand that some people always like to confuse the Anthony Lamb and Joku minutes when it was actually Anthony Lamb and Moody's situation from last year. And so it's now it got to the point where Moody can only play like five minutes. So I don't know if it's like his knee is cooked and they're just like waiting to the offseason for him to get traded to the Heat inevitably or something else entirely. So I don't know what's going on, man. I... He doesn't I, hit. Sh- he's not hitting shots. Yeah, I, he can't I, hit a quarter three. I get that for sure, but it's like it's so frustrating, man. It is because I can't because his his shot looks good. I truly believe he can shoot the ball, but also, just to be clear, since the All Star break, he's shooting thirty percent from three on a not small volume. So it's just like one of those things where it's like. Maybe it is just as simple as like, man, you need to just hit some shots and he'll stay on the floor a little more because he's not a guy that you're going to run offense through like dribbling, that sort of thing. He's kind of got to be a three and D guy a little bit. Yeah. And I think, unfortunately, I think the main thing that a lot of people don't understand is you have to take minutes from Kerr. You have to force minutes out of Kerr. It's like, that's what Draymond did, and to a lesser extent, what Joku did later on this mm-hmm. year. But We're unfortunately, positive. if you're going to be like about a replacement letter, a replacement level bench player, then I don't see really the point of being all that mad at that you're not getting as many minutes as you think that you deserve personally. You prob- It's not a good fit. It's definitely the roster's ass, but it's also you don't really play all that well next to some of the guys that are on the roster right now. So you probably just need a new... Side some new side probably need to see some new women. Probably <laughs> probably needs to fix that heroin, by the way. But my god, Moody. Love you, but no oh, man. Just <laughs> cut, shave off that whole whole head, man. Well, it worked for a Kaminga. So <laughs> it did work for Kaminga. It might be the move. All right. Appreciate guys. you, Tasha. Enjoy Have a great evening. All right, we're gonna give our guy another shot here. Promised him. Unmute. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Go. Go. <laughs> Presented by no. Okay. So, <laughs> all right, my thing is, all right, next year, like, like, what are they gonna do? Like, you're gonna re-sign Clank, and then you're gonna use the mid-level exception, let Paul walk, and you're going into the season with Chris Paul, not Chris Paul, but uh, Clank, and just using a mid-level guy. Like, come on now. If he gets out of the tax altogether, they are totally cooked. And I miss Jordan Poole. We would have a much better <laughs> record if they still had Jordan Poole. Appreciate it, guys. I I can't argue the Poole stuff, although he's he's not having a not having a good season in DC. Um, I will say this on the cap stuff: if all they do is resign Clay and then open up the mid-level to get like someone who's of the caliber of Dante DiVincenzo, who's like a mid-level player, then yes, they're going to suck next year. They do have the ability to maybe trade Chris Paul or trade Andrew Wiggins, uh, trade picks, do certain things to reshape the roster. And honestly, that's the only way they're going to be competitive next year. That is the one. Because it's not, it's to his point, it's not coming from, Bringing Clay back and signing a mid-level player. No, it, it, it's it's packaging, and honestly, the, the tough decision this offseason is going to be: Are they willing to package Kaminga for anything? And, and and they're saying that they won't. Um, but it's it's an easy, not an easy, but it's like a good starting package to go. Art right, Wiggins contract, right? Kaminga as the up and coming player for round pick. Like, okay, what does that get you out there? I have no idea. I'm just saying. That's the package if you're talking about – or Chris Paul. Sorry, Chris Paul's uh, contract uh, where they opt into that. They use that contract, which or, is, then becomes an expiring, right? Don't come in there. First-round pick. What does that get you? Or you throw more picks on the table. That's the other thing. Like, there's 2046 unprotected. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. Like, are you willing to – because to make – to play it fair, they have been hamstrung cap-wise. 
the last couple of years. Now they're less. They have a little more flexibility in terms of taking on money, in terms of uh, getting a little more creative with it. But they are still going to have to give up something. They are going to have to give up a 2032 pick or something like that where you're like, you know, we're going to bet that this makes us good. So we'll see. We'll see where they go with it. But, yeah, appreciate you, man. One thing before we get out of here, Andy. Uh Uh-oh. Only because Uh this is too funny. Oh, boy. He's just lurking. <laughs> I, you know what? He's not the player they needed in terms of being a 5'11, 30, 38, soon to be 39 year old guard, but I do appreciate him. <laughs> Chris Ball has quietly been one of the better parts of this Warrior season, Sam. Like, if it's nothing we're going to take away from the season, it is that Chris Paul, um, solid dude. Good. Yeah, man. He really <laughs> look, man. It was very easy to hate him. I actually don't anymore. I, I just I'm enjoying Chris Paul, man. I, I'm I'm comfortable with this minutes, um. But this is funny. It, it's been going on all season. It, it feels mm-hmm. like he's been he's been going after refs and refs have been going after him all season. You know, he's in that don't give a fuck stage of his career. Like he's not like Draymond where he just you know he's like out of control. He just. He just doesn't, and, and this happened. This happened at the end of the game, right? Because I, 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 know, yeah. I turned the game off with like a minute left, so I, I missed this. So he, he must have got ejected when the game didn't matter. So well, like this doesn't matter, but it's when it's, uh, I was gonna say when he was getting when he was walking off the court, like untucking his jersey because he got ejected. I'm like, all right, time to go set up for the pod. No, no <laughs> I, I, I admit I did it earlier than you. Minute and a half, they were down seven. They missed like four shots with no. I'm yeah, like, all right, it might, go. might have been a one possession difference to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go grab some water and 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 uh, and go look at this rundown. But no, I Chris Paul has been. What is a TikToker? What did he mean by that? What, what did go he look at go that? look at his Instagram. Uh, he posted some video of, you know, uh, like like Tony Brothers' Instagram. Like, sorry, Tony Brothers' TikTok. Yeah, here I'll I'll pull it up real quick. We might as well we might as well finish out the segment. So. Uh, yeah, let's, got nothing let's... else to do. Just gonna get mad online. <laughs> um, let's see real quick. There we TikTok, go. That's the majority of NBA players nowadays, anyway. Prosecutor, attorney, defense attorney, much for bad. I'm the judge, the jury, prosecutor, attorney, defense attorney, everybody. Right, kind of came full circle. With Absolutely, that. much for bad. I'm the judge, <laughs> oh my jury, god! Defense attorney, defense attorney, everybody. <laughs> 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 so that's the, i didn't that's re- i didn't realize it, i didn't realize he had a tiktok account like this but <laughs> uh, okay okay so he he's <laughs> everything uh, makes sense now so yeah everything makes sense now I, you know i i think do we do we like maybe we'll, we'll go one more on the on nba refs do we like the vet refs where they don't take no shit but they're a little bit command over commanding not a little bit a lot of bit or do yeah. we like the young refs that are kind of seem overwhelmed by the game and, and they sometimes don't really know what they're doing. Which one do we like? Feels like the Warriors. Is it do we like the the, the so one two timelines. Two timelines of the NBA refs. I feel like we're not getting good refs, man. What yeah what happened to Russell Chloe Crawford? What what happened? I'm gonna be washed. I'm gonna be washed like the Warriors and say I prefer the old ones. Because <laughs> at least I know what I'm getting with Tony with Tony Brothers with uh with Scott Foster. Scott Foster. <laughs> you know uh, maybe some mob ties, but but I appreciate it. The younger ones just annoy me. The younger yeah. ones, the younger ones just remind me of you know it's just it's a foul. It's a foul. It's yeah, like, relax, relax, bro. Relax. I can't, the Asian ref. There's an Asian ref. I think he's Korean. He he like just started and the, he refed a couple of Warriors games. And I remember specifically thinking to myself, Yo, this dude is fucking awful. What is happening? I've never seen them. No flow. He, no no flow. flow. Yep. Calling everything to a T. I mean, I'm, so, I'm sure he's good on paper at his job, but it's like, 
Bro, have you all ever the, played basketball or something? Can you just all the all the young refs ref like a dude who's on probation and they're like afraid to make a mistake. Whereas like uh you know, like Scott Foster and Tony Brothers can be annoying, but they're they got tenure. They're like, I'm gonna I'm gonna call the game. I wanna call the, the way I wanna call the game. And you know what? Push come to shove, I'd rather have that than the yeah. I'm with you. The chat is with us too. Chat is asking for AI refs, which I think we'll get nah, AI no. umps. AI umps is coming to I baseball. Don't, I don't want that either. It, it takes too much of the the joy out of the game. You yeah. know, I, I like the the human element. Yeah. I don't need I don't need what we had with the Laker game two weeks ago, with like tech malfunctioning and it taking 45 minutes to close out a game because that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, gonna happen. That, that is that is true. We did see a March Madness. Who got robbed? Somebody got robbed. Samford. Yeah. Samford got robbed off a, a review that should have happened. So I don't know. Refs can't win, honestly, most of the time. But I don't know. I can't stand all refs anyway. I'm sure. I'm sure most people don't. But hard job. That's true. All right, brother. Appreciate all right. you.